These are the patch notes for August 20th, 2024 and the start of Season 12, New Frontiers. Juno, the newest support hero, is now playable and is also available in comp. There are two new maps for the new Clash game mode and Reaper gets a Mythic skin this season. In case you haven't seen her yet, Juno is a girl from Mars and her whole theme is outer space. She floats, kinda flies and all her abilities are astronaut themed. Clash is a new game mode with an overcomplicated explanation. It's not that hard. Capture a point by standing on it while keeping enemies out. If you capture a point, your team gets a point. A Clash map has a total of 5 points that go in a straight line, with both teams spawning on either side. The 5 points are given a letter from A to E. Every time a team captures a point, the next point that you have to capture goes towards the team that did not capture the point. If your team spawns near point A and you lost the point, the point goes from point C to point B. Capture a team's point, so either point A or point E, and you instantly win the game. But the change that we got from the trial run that we got a while ago is that a team's point is split up into three sections. So for each one third of the time that you're capturing this point, you get a point. But only for points A or E. The maps for Clash are Hanaoka, the one from the trial set in Japan, and a completely new map with a familiar name if you're from Overwatch 1. Throne of Anubis. And I'm all for more maps. There's Hero Mastery courses for Zarya and Farah. Eh, whatever. Next up is the Avoid as Teammate feature, now having 15 slots, meaning that you can just tell up to 15 people you just don't ever want to see them again in your team. You get 3 pin slots that work like the old system. You'll never get those guys as teammates, and they stay in that Avoid slot as a teammate forever. The newer slots work in a slightly different way. Think of these 13 slots as a gradient, where the last person that you avoided is the least likely to be in your team, and the guy that you avoided because he forgot that walls existed unless he was shooting at them, that you avoided first is more likely to be on your team, because you filled up all the slots with people that you wanted to avoid, and you also don't have to worry about the big list of people you want to avoid filling up, because the first person that you avoided will be pushed out and automatically replaced. The pin slots stay in place and don't move. But the avoided people in the 13 slots automatically get removed from there after 7 days. But you can prevent this by pressing the reset avoid expiration button. And this change is honestly so great if you're climbing in overwatch. You just get so many people that you have to avoid. Sometimes they're trolling and obviously need to be avoided. But most of the time you just have to avoid underperformers or people that don't synergize with your playstyle. Spawn system changes. They call it wave respawn. The default respawn timer went up from 10 to 12 seconds and the overtime respawn timer went from 13 to 14. But teammates are now more likely to respawn together. If someone dies, they respawn after some time and they start a wave. If a teammate dies within 6 seconds of a wave starting, they'll join that wave and respawn faster. Meaning that their respawn timer will go down from 12 to a minimum of 6 seconds. Wave respawn is disabled at overtime and when the payload is close to the endpoint. If only one person is in a wave, the respawn timer is reduced to 10 seconds. A big change that I think will be great. This means that there will be less morons who run in 1v5 and get put back into spawn room over and over again. Grouping up like this is a lot easier and respawning after everyone died as a team is slightly faster. But teams that die one by one get punished harder because the default respawn time just went up. You can now try out skins in the practice range if you press hero from the main menu and open up a skin. Similar to how we could try mythic skins before. Now we can do it with any skin. Great change. The mid-year rank reset. Everyone's rank got completely reset, and I just barely got the rank that I wanted for a few weeks ago, and it's already being reset! Yay! This is not a soft reset apparently either, so everyone will have to climb and play together for a while. This will they'll probably mean that there's going to be a bunch of wild games with varying skill levels while the levels set themselves up again. Well, good luck. I'm not a fan of hard resets, because there's a good reason why a bronze player can't keep up with platinum players. And I'm also salty about finally climbing and then losing it again. <laughs> When you're playing your 10 placement matches, you'll get your predicted rank. This rank is now considered when trying to play with other people for whether or not a game is wide or narrow. I'm confused as to why this wasn't a thing before, but okay, you cannot safely play with your friends in a placement match before getting placed into white queues. Let's get into the balance changes for heroes. Blizzard wanted to make it easier to punish highly mobile heroes and are reducing their health. This usually comes with some kind of trade-off though, so it's more of a shift in power rather than a straight-up nerf. Diva's defense matrix duration is reduced from 3.5 to 3 seconds, and it was already an ability that felt like an eternity. She's still extremely strong without having the longer defense matrix. Diva players will now get punished harder for misusing their defense matrix, but overall it's not much of a difference. Orissa's energy javelin. Impact damage increased from 60 to 80. Getting hit by a spear, even without getting pinned to the wall, will deal slightly more damage now. It's not an insanely big amount, but if your hero's health went from 250 to 225, any damage increase in this patch will feel extremely strong. 
getting hit by the spear as a 225 health hero will now leave you with 145, whereas before you'd be left with a 190. Zarya's secondary fire minimum damage went from 47 to 55, and maximum damage went from 95 to 110. Same thing applies here. Squishy heroes won't just feel a change from 8 to 15 damage, but it will now feel like it deals more than 33 to 40 extra damage. Echo's health got reduced to 225 without getting a composition buff. But since it's now easier to reduce some heroes to the threshold for the increased damage of Focusing Beam, I think it's only fair. Hanzo's health is now also 225. Now that a bunch of heroes are below 250 health, he can start one-shotting a bunch of those heroes again. So it's only fair he does not get any composition buffs, as that's already the composition buff. Junkrat grenades from his primary fire are now reduced by half in size after bouncing twice, and keeping a bit more of their velocity after bouncing. I think this is supposed to prevent getting spammed and feeling like grenade just blow up and hit you from a bit too far. I always felt like I had to stay the hell away from these death bombs as they sometimes get registered as hit even though I felt like I was no one near. I think this change will only make things more fair without impacting Junkrat's overall effectiveness. Sojourn's primary fire now has a reduced spread from 2.1.6 degrees. Critical hits now give 10 energy. Energy regeneration rate has been reduced from 33 to 15 seconds after 7 seconds. Energy degeneration rate has been reduced from 33 to 15 after 7 seconds. This means that Sojourn can now get double the energy from hitting criticals while being more accurate and she gets to keep the energy for a railgun a lot longer. This is a great change for her since I felt for a while now that Sojourn it just doesn't feel lethal unless you let her shoot you. I believe that this change will help her get more right clicks off and therefore a lot more kills secured. Sombra's health goes from a 250 to 225. But the impact damage on a virus goes up from 25 to 35, and the bonus movement speed from stealth goes from 45 to 60%. And while Sombra herself is easier to kill, this change should be a big win for Sombra. Killing squishies was already easy, but the time to kill just went down by a lot this patch, and you're upgrading her damage? If you're the one hunting a Sombra, you should expect things to be a lot easier now with a reduced health. Torbjorn gets 25 of his health replaced with armor, as he still has the same total of 300 health. Torbjorn is now slightly tankier, but not by much. Maybe just enough to make a difference? We'll kinda just have to see. Ilari's solar rifle has her ammo reduced from 16 to 14, and Captive Sun, her ultimate big projectile, environment collision has been removed. Ilari just deals way too much damage throughout the game, so making her reload only seems more fair to me. And her ultimate hitting near a wall or environment would apparently make the big explosion explode earlier than expected, so this should prevent that. And you can expect to see a few more precise shots. I believe she's still playable and this nerf isn't that big of a deal. Juno already got a lot of changes. Her health is reduced from 250 to 225. Her primary fire's rate of fire is reduced from 34 to 28. Pearl Salt Torpedo's impact damage and healing goes up from 75 to 85, and the heal over time is reduced from 60 to 50. Hyper Ring can now be deployed from 3.5 meters further, and the cooldown goes down from 16 to 40. Her ultimate orbital ray now goes forward from 1.9 meters per second to 2.25 meters per second. And that's a lot of changes! Honestly, her playtest felt fair to play against in the playtest, but when I played her myself, I felt a big lag of feedback. That's no oomph for hitting shots or healing. I'm more concerned about her rate of fire being reduced, but I'm not even sure what the effects are. Since she's a new hero we only saw for a weekend, we don't know how effective she's gonna be, with or without these changes. As people are getting better with her, we'll see whether or not she's in a good state. Juno also gets a lot of quality of life updates. I'm just gonna go through this really fast because I haven't played her enough yet, so why is this such a long section? I already forgot everything about her. Her weapon now looks different and sounds different when she's low in ammo. Pulsar Torpedo's cooldown if no one has been locked in goes from 5 seconds to 2 seconds. It's, it's now easier to lock in if the hitboxes are in view. If someone's been locked in and they walk out of the maximum range of 40 meters, they'll stay locked in for 5 more meters. Healing Torpedoes have a new visual that shows when it's hitting enemy shields or hitting walls. Glide Boost can now slightly adjust better when going through parts of buildings like doorways. The enemy Juno's voice line for her ult is now quote unquote updated in tone to better contrast the ally version. Whatever that means. The following sounds are now more noticeable. Heals when an ally is almost full health with a gun, ally and enemy impact sound with its torpedoes, cancelling torpedoes, entering hyper ring for the first and every other time, enemy Juno's ultimate start sound. Let's just get to Kiriko. Her health goes down from 250 to 225. The critical hits on her kunai now hit for 2 times the damage, going down from 2.5 times. The base damage per kunai though goes up from 45 to 60, and the recovery time goes up from 0.5 seconds to 0.55 seconds. Kiriko is one of those heroes where a bad Kiriko only tickles, but a good Kiriko hitting headshots feels like the most broken thing in the game. 
This change where her damage doesn't spike as much, but Reddit comes out gradually, will still reward you for hitting headshots, but hitting body shots won't feel like throwing anymore. Her damage actually deals damage now, going up from 112 to 120, with the extra base damage and the higher headshot damage, and reduced health on a lot of heroes, Kiriko will probably still be one of the strongest supports out there, as well as making it easier for lower ranked people to play her. Life Weaver's Healing Blossom now charges passively and no longer reduces movement speed while charging. Battle Platform Duration only counts down when someone's standing on it, and it goes down to the ground if no one's on it for 2 seconds. Total Duration goes up from 10 to 12 seconds, and its health is reduced from 400 to 300. The heal on Rejuvenating Dash went down from 60 to 45. While the change from the primary fire is one of the best things that Life Weaver could have asked for. This means more healing when a fight starts, or even if Life Weaver is busy dealing with someone and quickly looking back to heal, that's not possible. I'm not sure about Battle Platform though. The platform can go up and down now, and I've seen insane life weavers do the most insane stuff with this platform anymore. So this change can either make the top life weaver players look even more insane by making the use of the platform that goes up and down like a lift, or it completely broke the ability because the platform now won't stay up in the air for longer than two seconds without anyone standing on it. His self heal being reduced is also a bit scary since I've never felt like life weaver is immortal like a good mercy. Still hoping for a change where you can more easily switch between healing or attacking, but we'll just have to see how this change affects life weaver. Mercy's base health got reduced from 250 to 225, but her staff's healing goes up from 55 to 60 per second, and her damage boost goes up from 25 to 30 percent. Now, although she's easier to kill, if your team can't get to her, she's a lot more effective. And her ability to pocket someone is so good and stable that whenever you make a Mercy too good, she'll be in every game. But she's been in a pretty bad spot for a long time, unless you're a Mercy name pulling up the craziest movements ever seen by mankind. Be prepared to punish Mercy's a lot harder now, as killing her is a lot easier, but her overall effectiveness went up as well. Moira's health is reduced from 250 to 225. Her biotic grasp damage is going from 60 per second to 65 per second. And this makes it essentially a power shift by making her easier to kill while also being able to deal more damage per second. DPS Moira is now less effective if she's not careful, but frontline brawling Moira should be more effective with the extra damage. The Lucia Mafia also got a treatment similar to Moira. Base health reduced from 250 to 225. His primary fire goes up from 18 to 22. With his burst fire shooting three times, that's actually a buff of 12 damage. Killing Lucia should feel a lot better now, and he also has to be more careful before diving in, or he'll get blown up. Flashpoint maps now have speed boosts coming out of spawn. We can finally just fight instead of walking for hours on the map. I hated it so much. And you'll stop being faster than dealing or taking damage, and it counts towards the maximum speed boost of 75%. So Lucio players won't be able to break past their maximum speed using the doors. Pushbot collision box has been updated so there should be less spots where you can play in a cheeky way where you stand on the high ground and still contest the bot. Maps will be rotated based on what the newest map or mode is at the time, so expect to play a lot more clash on Hano Oko or Anubis for a while. It will return back to normal after some time, I'm not sure when though. You can now see the outlines of the point you're supposed to go to on Clash and Flashpoint when that point is unlocked. In case you're ever lost on the map, just follow the gigantic floating lines on your screen. All maps are now randomly chosen between daylight, nighttime, or whatever time that the map has. I love this change. This game feels a lot more dynamic now. It's not permanently nighttime in Legion Tower anymore. And there's a couple of bug fixes here. Gotcha achievement not being properly awarded. Weapon skins not showing in a weapon variant menu under heroes. First time players couldn't play skirmish while waiting for a game. The mythic skin for Ash would not trigger certain effects while playing on Steam. Ilari's secondary fire hitting and healing environments instead of playing at a certain hitbox. Janky effects when Juno was hitting Diva entering her mech with a torpedoes. And that's it for the season 12 patch notes. A big change with a lot of heroes getting in different interactions again. I'm mostly just hyped for the 225 health change and the avoid the steam it features. As these are in my opinion the biggest changes in this patch. I'm still neutral about whether or not the health change is a good thing or not. But we'll have to see how the whole meta changes. And that's it for me in this video. Subscribe if you enjoyed it and see you next time.